studio, we've got guests who will be taking us through some of the issues that are part of this electoral process. And one of those is uh, the broad-based economic empowerment and uh, what it means for South Africa and what difference has taken place over the past 20 years. I'm joined now by Keith Livingston, he's CEO at Economy EE, and Stefan van der Falt, he's head of corporate finance at uh, Bravura. Gentlemen, thank you, and thank you for finding time to come. Have you voted, by the way? Not yet. Not yet? Are you going to there, vote? There wasn't time beforehand. I will definitely <laughs> do so afterwards. Are you going to vote? Most definitely. Are you going to vote? Absolutely. Absolutely. So you're not listening to uh, the voices that have been saying, guys, let's not vote because there's nothing to vote for. No, I think it's an important process, so I'll be there. Absolutely. I there is certainly you, something to vote for. I think there's <laughs> definitely something to vote for. Even if there wasn't something to vote for, I think people must get into the habit. It's, it's a duty for every South African to vote. Let's talk about BEE. It's been one of the key policies that have been implemented by the democratic government since 1994 and some people would argue that the way it was implemented has not been right some would say there's been a real difference that would be made so let me begin by asking for a review first from you Stefan and then I'll come to you uh, Keith. yeah I think um, the introduction of the codes um, which have, has been with us now since 2006 yeah has um, resulted in a lot of focus being placed on empowerment by, by companies. Have they worked? Um, it has worked. I think there has been a lot of problems with the implementation of uh, the codes. Um, I do think a lot of good has come from the codes. Yeah. And companies are starting to see it not just as compliance, yeah. but starting to also see the strategic benefit um, of complying with the codes. Why are they difficult to implement? One, I think the codes are quite complex. Um, you really need to understand the different dynamics of the codes. Yeah. And people have looked at the codes, um, definitely in respect of the old codes, within the, the seven respective elements. Right. And I think the, the main advantage with the codes lies once one can start to integrate those different elements into an, a holistic policy within yeah. an organization. Yeah. But it's a mind shift, you know, it's like any legislation, you know, first it's a tick box approach. Yeah. And then after that, you know, once you've accepted it, people start to, to look at ways in which they can use the legislation to their advantage as Absolutely. well. Absolutely. Keith, please come in. Uh, yeah, I think that uh, we need to realize that BE is not the golden bullet that is going to solve every single problem that we have in this uh, country. Uh, it's a, in a way, it's a small policy. I'd love it to be a far more important policy than it is. And as Stefan said, it only came into effect uh, a couple of years ago. The Act itself was passed in 2003. Yeah. The first codes officially came into being in 2007. That is, what, about 13 years after the new democratic government came into effect in the first place. So we should maybe make a difference between transformation and the B codes of good practice. Yeah. For the first 10, 12 years, government was maybe quite confused about the whole process of transformation. Uh, the, the fact that we need it is without any doubt, I don't think anybody disagrees that we do need it. Yeah. Uh, but it has taken a long time before the B codes, which are the first objective measurement yeah. of transformation, actually came about. And I think the one of the questions we're going to ask is, has it worked or is it working? Absolutely. And it is absolutely working where it is being applied. Yeah. It currently only applies to business. Government doesn't follow it themselves. Yeah. The yeah. other acts that take precedence <laughs> in some, some cases, such as uh, the Mining Act. Yeah, but of course the complexity has created an industry on its own, which I suppose in one way is good, but some, in some ways also uh, makes it harder for particularly small companies to implement. But when you review, let's get out of the technicalities of uh, BEE and the codes and all those other kind of things. Mm. When, you re when you review the good or bad it has done, what did you say, net net? Are we better off? I, I say we are far better off. Uh, when we looked at our statistics originally uh, back in, two, in 1994, we, we really didn't have uh, uh, that uh, terribly much uh, transformation. Uh, uh, white people owned 90% of the economy. White people were in 90% of the top jobs. Yeah. That has changed quite dramatically. The Commission for Employment Equity yeah. reports every year, and we're seeing an improvement. We obviously want to see a bigger improvement, yeah. but it is certainly improving. There is the, uh, the black middle class, the emerging black middle class, which yeah. I don't think would have arrived without some form of transformation policy. Uh, we say it hasn't done enough, but it has certainly made a very big difference uh, uh, to many people's lives, and I'm thrilled for that. Yeah, we need to pause a little bit now, but when we come back, one of the questions I'm going to be asking is, when do we end it? We need to have an idea when BEE will end so people can just wake up and go to work 
and work. Okay, let's see if we can cross over now to Jay, who is in Beckersdale, where we had earlier there was a little bit of uh, uh, activity or some kind of commotion. Let's see if we can join Jay now. Jay, are you there? G'day, Godfrey. Uh, yes, we arrived in Beckersdale only this morning to a misty red uh, sunrise and uh, it was also to the sounds of choppers and police vans as well as a, 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 a strong police presence. Um, what had happened overnight was um, a couple of the IEC tents had been burnt down, three of them to be exact. Yeah. Um, so we arrived to uh, a lot of the IEC officials actually hastily putting up uh, um, spare tents in the meantime. Um, so there was certainly a feeling of apprehension in the air, uh, especially for the voters. Uh, but as the days worn on, it seems like it's, it's calmed down a lot. Um, and the, there's still this strong police presence. I've counted so far five SAPS uh, Caspers, eight yeah. Army and Yanas, a helicopter, sure. and a troop of mounted horses. So <laughs> and you could say that there, there are more police in Bekazal than there are people. Absolutely. That sounds frightening. But are people out voting? What are the queues like? Uh, the queues have extended. At first, it started off very slowly uh, at 7 o'clock. There was a slight delay, but now the queues have reached to about 200 or so, and they're growing strong. Okay. Jay Cobb was our CNBC reporter out in Beckerstill. Thank you. We'll be taking a, a look at uh, what's going on on the ground there a little uh, later. Let's continue on our discussion in studio. Gentlemen, let me come to you, Stefan. Uh, one of the questions I asked, as I said, when we come back is, I want to understand when we end BEE? Or do we only begin talking about ending BEE when we have, uh, okay, as you said, fully understood the codes and secondly, uh, made some kind of meaningful difference, but at what point? Mm. I think there would be a need for the for sunset laws yeah. in the codes. Um, would it need to be very soon? I don't think so. Okay. I think we haven't made enough progress as yet to really start to talk about when the end is. Yeah. I think the codes always envisaged uh, almost a 10-year review period. Yeah. Um, uh, there was a lot of um, speculation whether that's going to be the end of the codes or not. I mm -hmm. think we are strongly of the view that it won't be. Okay. I think which is also evident by the um, or by the new codes that has been issued. Absolutely. Um, and I think uh, you know it, it's, it is just a very long process. You know yeah. things like yeah. management, for example. Necessarily so. Yeah. Should, 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 should it be so complex? Because I'm thinking simplistically, I mean, I'm a journalist. What we try to do is to write as clearly as possible. Um, if you want to effect change at the ownership level, at the management level, yes. or at, at whatever level, need it be so complex as to require arms and teams of lawyers to decipher and implement? Yeah. I don't think it needs to be that complex. Yeah. Um, but as it's usual in business, there's always loopholes, there's always different ways of doing things. Yeah. And you need an objectively measurable criteria for companies to be measured, um, especially because uh, the codes are being used in procurement processes. So you need a fair benchmark for companies to be assessed against. And, and that's probably the need for the, for the complexity. Yeah. But Good. ultimately, yeah, you know, if companies are doing the right thing, yeah. um, they will find that they don't need to look at the complexity. They will almost start to automatically get the score that they want to get. Yeah. You're watching our special coverage of the South African election in 2014. Uh, in between, we are trying to get into the field and see what's happening. We're hoping we'll be able to cross and see President Jacob Zuma casting his vote. But Keith, come in. Yes, uh, I actually agree with uh, what Stefan has said, his last comment. Uh, uh, it isn't that terribly complex, those codes. They sound complicated and they're a big wad of uh, legal paper, yeah. but uh, I find that in one day I can train somebody to fully understand uh, most of the important parts of the B code. So they sound complex. I think they become complex because they become an emotional issue to many people. Okay. And when you look okay. at it purely objectively, uh, as Stefan said, if a company does the right thing, they spend time and effort training their staff. They yeah. contribute to uh, corporate social investment or what is now called socio-economic development. They make sure that everybody does what is really good corporate governance and nothing else. They are automatically compliant. Okay, so if we look on our screens, we've got President Jacob Zuma casting his vote. I wonder who is voting for, for president. Any, any guesses, guys? <laughs> Do you think he wants Julius back? <laughs> You potentially could well be, yeah. That's the president of South Africa, uh, President Jacob Zuma. He is casting his vote, and uh, that's part of the elections coverage that we're having here on CNBC Africa of the 2014 elections in South Africa. In between, we're talking about some of the issues.
issues that are important in this election. And of course, one of those is uh, black economic empowerment. So now to Chris Bishop, he's the, at the IEC Results Operations Center in Pretoria. Chris, what are you updating us on? Well, uh, as I say, at this moment, it's pretty slow going. Uh, the center's slowly filling up. Uh, the only um, real uh, news of the morning is that in about 40 minutes' time, the chief electoral officer will stand just down below me on the left here yeah. and uh, give us the latest, uh, some idea of what the turnout figures are, yeah. some idea of some of the incidents that have been going on around the country. Yeah, Chris, give us a, uh, a timeline in terms of uh, the voting process and then also, of course, the big one, which is the results. When do we expect to uh, have uh, an idea of whether Julius Malema is making it to Parliament or not? Well, I mean, I see that uh, he's voted with his grandmother this morning uh, yeah. on the updates here. And as you know, um, Ahmed Kathrad has voted, uh, Jacob Zuma has voted, yeah. Sir Ramaphosa, all the big shots have been out there. We've been getting reports coming in. But um, the results will start coming in maybe from late tomorrow. And they're hoping that everything will be done by Friday. And then we'll know who's going to run the country for the next five years. Absolutely. You sound like you're uncertain. Chris, are you? Uncertain. I don't know. Uh, you never know. I mean, there's many a slip, twix, cup and lip, they say. I mean, who knows? Uh, one thing, first rule of journalism, never assume. Absolutely. Never assume. Chris Bishop, live from the IEC Results Election Center in uh, Pretoria. Thank you for joining us. And I will keep crossing to Chris and our reporters out in the field to get a feel of uh, how voting is taking place. In the meantime, in studio, we continue to discuss some of the issues that those voters are looking at. And one of those, of course, is uh, BEE. Uh, let me come to you, Keith. We talked about uh, the potential for a sunset clause. Stefan said he thinks it will come at some stage. Is that your view? I'd like, I would love to see a sunset clause. I'd love to see BEE completed and finished uh, pretty much by next year even. And I would be, give me great pleasure for me to be able to close my own business down <laughs> and do something different. <laughs> if, okay. and that's the big if, if BEE has achieved its objective. Yeah. We haven't yet done so. So we should have a target date in mind in order to achieve the targets that we need, yeah. in order to ensure that this democracy uh, is a lot more equal than it has been. It's getting there. Yeah. Uh, I think it's going to take a lot longer than the next five years, but I don't think it should take very much longer. Yeah. And uh, at the BE summit last year in October, when uh, the minister and the president launched the new codes, uh, President Zuma did get up there and he said he doesn't want to be looking at uh, a, a launching excuse me, launching new codes in 10 years' time yeah. from 2013. So in a way, he said, let's get it done properly. So, yeah, there should be a sunset clause when we have achieved the objective that we need to achieve. Yeah. We've got a long way to go, unfortunately, Godfrey. But the objectives are already there in terms of the targets, isn't it? So we know what we are trying to aim at. The question is the timing of it. And I think therein lies really the, 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 the bigger problem because uh, you're not going to get consensus in terms of uh, uh, when to shut it down. Yeah, it's going it's to take a little bit of time to get that consensus. Uh, remember, the targets are actually very, very easy yeah. in some respects. Uh, uh, never mind the demographics of this country, which are maybe, roughly speaking, uh, 80, 90 percent black people, 10 yeah. percent white people. Yeah. Uh, the target, for example, for ownership, as Stefan will tell you, is 25 percent of uh, companies need to be owned by black people as a target, not, yeah. an, uh, not as a, uh, an absolute, right. which still means that uh, uh, the codes allow 75 percent of the country to be owned by white people, which will still not even be as equal as we want, but uh, we, yeah. we can never get everything exactly in line with demographics and they don't but, want but, that. But, but the idea, Stefan, is to make sure that you are giving those who had a disadvantage a leg up rather than getting them into a position where they're in control when perhaps, number one, it's not their capital, number two, they haven't had the expertise and the experience. Sure, and I think that goes a long way in terms of how especially ownership has been, yeah, yeah. been implemented. Um, and we, I don't believe that um, empowerment is, uh, is really about enriching a selected few. It should go to real empowerment and yeah. making sure that the money flows to the right type of initiatives um, to ultimately make a big difference to people's lives and to really uplift, uplift them at, um, at the end of the day. Do you know what, what confuses is why companies can't just empower their own workers? In other words, don't go looking out for this guy who yeah. is sitting wherever he's sitting. You've got your own workers, people who are contributing to the success or failure of the business. Just empower those. Give them yes. the ownership. Don't talk about anybody else. Yes. Maybe the community. Yes, yeah. yes. I agree with that to some extent. I also, th but it, there's some danger in it as well. Yeah. Um, People who 
get shares needs to understand shares as well because yeah. shares don't just go up they also go down and people need to understand that i think one also needs to look at what is the ultimate payout to those people yeah um, will it just be a couple of thousand rand if it is then it's not real empowerment True. and then one should rather look at how one can structure something where you still empower your employees yeah but in a sustainable manner for example creating much more skills within your ownership structure or right. as a result of your ownership structure <coughs> yeah. where you can really make a sustainable difference to people's lives. Absolutely. We are taking a shot. Here we are. The people for who this should be probably more important are not voting or they are not voting in the numbers that they're supposed to. Because when you talk about BE, I think what you're saying is that you want to create a level playing field and the people who are going to benefit from that level playing field appear uninterested. How is that? Yeah, it's actually uh, it's crazy. It, it's quite crazy. I mean, it's uh, um, the policy that will ultimately have a great impact on their future. Yeah, um, and they should be out there to determine that policy and the way it's going to to affect them going forward. And I think it's no surprise then that transformation perhaps has not been as a widespread as it ought to be if people are not aware of uh, what it took to get them to the stage where they're actually able to exercise that right to vote. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Let's talk about uh, the, 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 the change that transformation has brought. And I made the point earlier about the fact that uh, you probably can't transform better than anything unless you educate people. Education probably the biggest tool that you can use mm. to transform. How effective has been the transformation process so far in terms of uh, BEE and its impact? I can't agree with you more in terms of the the use of education yeah. for empowerment. Um, I always use the example um, of some recent transactions um, that has been um, terminated. For yeah. example, the APSA transaction where 3.4 billion has been paid out. Mm. The recent Sunnam transaction where 15 billion has been paid out. My question around that is, if 18 billion has been spent on education and skills development, what impact would that have had on South Africa yeah. and on people's futures? I think if that has been spent much better and in a much more sustainable manner, yeah. um, the impact we would have seen which, which would have been much greater. Yeah. And that's what the, uh, I think one of the inserts have uh, referred to the Malaysian example. Yeah. And that's exactly what, what they have been focused on, uh, uh, was on education. And that is, uh, was also why it's been so successful. But they, it also went through its ups and downs uh, 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 when they started to implement that. Let me be controversial and say South Africans are materialistic and therefore they want the, these big payouts rather than actually uh, focusing on education, which is probably more transparent formative than you know getting a few billion rand uh, Godfrey I would uh, I would agree with you I think a lot of people are looking at uh, BE as a way to make money mm. and I get approached by many people uh, both black and white saying how do I, uh, uh, I I want to be your BE partner or how do I become uh, a rich via BEE <laughs> and the point that uh, yeah. we made in the insert is BE is actually short for broad-based Black economic empowerment. Yeah. So it covers many aspects, and education or skills development accounts for 25% of the entire scorecard. Sure. And that is as important, if not more so, than ownership or anything else. Yeah. Unfortunately, everybody seems to look at ownership and a way to get rich quick, uh, which maybe some people have successfully done so, but uh, yeah. us normal guys, we have to work hard. Yeah. We don't, get, we don't make our millions or billions uh, very easily. Uh, we've got to follow the normal process. Yeah. Uh, education is uh, so important. And uh, uh, yeah, I don't know why uh, so many people only look at the, the money side of things. If only the youth realize that uh, they are in this country for the long term. They've yeah. got 40 or 50 years of working experience. And uh, if only they would start at the bottom, uh, take advantage of the B policies which are there simply to level the playing field, yeah. not to do anything else. And if you don't start working hard yourself, you're not going to get a little bit of education, then more education, yeah. a better job, uh, more income, a better job, and finally, eventually, in 10 or 15, 20 years' time, yeah. maybe reach the director level, become owners of businesses, and we all want to take shortcuts. Mm -hmm. There isn't an easy way to really take that shortcut. We need to sort out uh, the initial problems, first of all. Yeah, I, I can tell you one of my biggest problems with uh, South African youth, and now we're talking about the fact that they are not voting, but one of the other problems is the protests that you see. You hear people demanding, I want this, I want this, I want this, this should be delivered, why has this not been given to us, etc., etc. And it's this whole approach to empowerment where people expect things to be done for them. Perhaps, could education 
and I mean education in the sense of uh, telling people uh, what to expect and uh, how to uh, take advantage of BE be the answer here uh, well, educating them that ownership is one aspect and a small aspect the bigger aspect mm -hmm is being able to understand the business and operate it. Oh yeah, with, without any uh, doubt, uh, Godfrey, I almost evangelize about how to take the advantage of BEE in a proper way. Yeah. And uh, we, uh, part of it is education, uh, telling younger people how they can eventually benefit. At the same time, telling many businessmen how they should benefit. And uh, I do go around and I give a lot of talks uh, yeah. explaining to companies uh, this is small black owned companies, even larger companies, yeah. how they should leverage their very good B status. And uh -huh. what really frustrates uh -huh. me sometimes, and we saw it in the insert, there's a lot of fronting taking place. Yeah. I've even come across black owned companies who are fronting by forging their B certificate when they should really go along and say, I'm a good company. Because I'm black owned, yeah. I'm slightly more attractive to you to purchase from me, right. so please do so. Yeah. And if only those companies would take advantage of what is available. Yeah, so it I is education. It, People it have is, to be told yeah. these things, yeah. unfortunately. Absolutely, and if I can quickly give you a short anecdote in our own business, uh, we are growing our business as fast as we can. Yeah. We uh, took on about uh, six or seven learners just a couple of months ago, and these people are so motivated. Uh, to grow. They started at a low salary. They've already increased their salary. Yeah. They've already increased their knowledge of the business. I have no doubt that within two, three years time, uh, I hope they will all stay with me, but in some cases, I'm so too, in some cases the they're going to go along and join <laughs> uh, Stefan's company or other yeah, companies. Because Stefan has said, I'll give you a yeah. few more rand. And I will be only too happy to see them triple or quadruple their uh, salaries in the next couple of years. And that yeah. is the message I'd love to give to every yeah. single young person out yeah. there. Yeah. You can do it. Uh, yes, none of us can all be a Bill Gates or Warren Buffett, yeah. but we can True. all be very successful and we can all live a happy yeah. life. Uh, my closing comment is BE is good for business, yeah. very good for business. Yeah. BE is good for people, our employees, yeah. and therefore BE is, BE is good for the growth of this economy, which is the most important thing. So yeah. I can't see anything wrong with BE. I've got a lot of young people in here and I'm hoping they are listening. It is hard work. I sure work. hope you guys it are listening. Is, uh, absolutely. Yeah. Stefan. Um, so we have uh, BEE coming in. First of all, we had BEE, right? Just Black Economic Empowerment. Then we had triple BEE. Now, which suggests that there was a rethink in terms of uh, what the authorities wanted to achieve. Now, when you look back, do you think perhaps the initial approach was wrong to simply talk about broad, uh, so broadly about BEE, rather than actually focusing on very specific aspects like uh, maybe ESOPs for, uh, e e for, 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 for workers and also including communities within uh, the, 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 the BEE structure? Yeah, I think the, 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 the start of BEE, yeah. um, people really looked at obviously more uh, just ownership. inclusive kind of, uh, yeah, just ownership. Yeah. Um, and, but it's, I think the framework has been there. People, uh, the first people that jumped on the bandwagon was obviously those who could make a lot of money about that. Yeah, and who and it's like people. all things in life, you know, when you, when there's a new rule, you kind of just comply with it and you don't see the real benefit. Sure. But that has really changed. We do see a lot of companies that's now really starting to see the benefit of really following an inclusive type of strategy yeah. um, and doing BE for the right reasons. And, so, and once you start to do that, I really believe that it does create value for companies. Yeah. KPMG actually does a survey on that. And there's very few companies who actually measure whether BE actually added value to, the, to their business. Uh, but uh. for those who did measure that, there has been a significant increase in the contribution to, to the top line yeah. um, in terms of their business as well. And they could really see the benefit yeah. of doing that. But one would have thought that being inclusive would be a natural thing and would be the first requirement rather than you know getting one guy who already has a billion in his bank yes. and uh, getting him as your BEE partner yes. why why are company are companies reluctant okay i was going yeah. to accuse before I, <laughs> I i open it up are companies reluctant to make their workers their sole BEE partners it depends um, and again um, and i've said it earlier yeah um, the ownership and making your your employees owners of the business yeah. works well when the share price does well. But what happens okay. if the share price doesn't do well? And do workers really understand that? It again goes back to education. Mm -hmm. um, one can do that if one actually educate your workers and if they can then really understand what that difference is. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, and we've said it now a number of times, 
it's not just about the money. Yeah. It's about what you do with the money. Yeah. Do you use the money to go and buy a car or do you use the money to go and buy an education? Right. Um, and buying an education is just so much more sustainable, not yeah. only to the business, yeah. to that individual, but also to the country. Whose role do you think it should be to educate? Keith, I will bring you in on this as well. Mm -hmm. Let me start with you and then we'll go to Keith. One, it's the role of government. I yeah. think there's a, there okay. hasn't been a lot of education by, by yeah. Government, yeah. government as well. Yeah. But also companies need to do more to educate themselves. You know, it's a, um, I'm just amazed always that companies can do a 25% BE transaction yeah. and only score 12 points out of 20 or the available 23 under the existing codes right. for that. It just means that they haven't really considered and educated themselves in terms of what the codes really mean and what they really want to achieve. So it sounds like companies need to be educated themselves. Mm. Uh, <laughs> with, with, without doubt, I still get amazed. Uh, uh, eight years into the process or seven years since 2007, a company is still asking me, what does it mean to be registered with BEE? Mm. And there's no such concept. You reach a B level. And they don't understand that these are even large companies who haven't made a study. Uh, they don't need to study it in detail. Uh, read, listen to TV, the radio. Uh, uh, they should understand. And if only they would. Uh, but as uh, Stefan mentioned, it is government's duty. And I do believe that uh, uh, that is one area. And I don't like criticizing uh, government or the Department of Trade Industry. Mm. But they haven't done enough to explain two companies, how B works, and that's why it's become such an emotional issue. Yeah. It shouldn't be, but it has.